All right, 21W16A. Let's give this one a look. Feels good to be back to normal snapshot videos again. Oh, I'm so glad. <laughs> Hey, remember this world? Yep, we're back here once again because world generation is back to normal. <laughs> so the first thing here is something that we kind of all saw coming, but is a little bit of a smaller change, I guess, and that is that you can now grow Azalea. Yeah, so these guys should eventually grow into a tree and it looks like the hitboxes changed as well, which is kind of cool, but anyway, we can actually bone mill this and it'll turn into a tree. Okay, I was wondering that. You can bone mill the Azalea and you'll still get flowers in here. What happens if you bone mill the flowering Azalea? Same thing, okay. Looks like you get the same tree doesn't matter whether you do the flowering one or the normal one and these trees are really really cool they'd just be such a pain to farm <laughs> so i guess the only reason you'd want to farm these is for the leaves which is all right because you do get a fair amount of leaves but the logs are yeah they can be straight or they can be really really lent over kind of like i guess acacia trees but maybe worse or maybe not as bad i'm not sure but yeah anyway they're cool trees i do like them anyway but the main thing for this snapshot is dripstone growth yeah, so dripstone now grows, which is pretty cool. I believe it needs water above it, and it'll take ages, but it will grow eventually. If I change the random tick speed, will it increase the growth? Yes, it will. Okay, so you can see this guy growing now. I'm not sure how far he'll grow. It's set down here, seven blocks long. Okay, even though I had the random tick speed set to like a million, that is a million, yep, uh, it does take a while. And yeah, these things don't grow very quickly at all. Apparently, one stage can take several Minecraft days, which is... Yeah, not the best, but it makes sense. I mean, they justified it in the post by saying, you know, instead of taking thousands of years, it takes a couple Minecraft days. But yeah, so something else with this is this bottom one should grow as well, I think. So let's t set the random tick speed up a little bit again. I want to see the bottom one grow up. Yep, there we go. You saw that happen. So the, the bottom one will only grow if the top one grows as well. And as you can see, they've made a connection. Nice. So that means we can farm this stuff. I think if we push it with a piston, will it drop it? Oh, the redstone place has been reordered. Yep. So if you push them with a piston, you get the item. So we can get pointed dripstone from farms. It might take a while, but it is possible. And of course, you can craft dripstone blocks from the pointed dripstone. So we can technically infinitely farm dripstone, which is nice. Good to see. Good to see. Oh, and as you can see, the lava cauldron thing works now. So, you know, this dripstone had lava above it and it filled up this cauldron. This wasn't filled up before. I don't know if you noticed earlier in the snapshot video. And there's about 50 million points about the dripstone that basically says if it's waterlogged, it won't grow. If it's waterlogged, it won't grow. If there's water in between, it won't grow. So yeah. All right. And it looks like the raw ore textures have been changed a little bit. Yeah, they do look slightly different. It looks like the iron is a little bit more squished than it was before. And the gold is not quite as saturated, I guess. And I'll put the image on the screen for the changes, but the changes to the raw ores themselves, like these ones, I think they look awesome. I am a pretty big fan of those, to be honest. Yeah, so that, that is the changes to these raw ores. Now for the rest of the changes for this, I'm gonna have to hop into another world. So if you missed it, this update was gonna be split into two parts. One of those being basically everything in this world, which is, you know, the new features, the new blocks and all that kind of stuff. And the second one will introduce the actual caves and the actual mountains. Oh, whoa, I didn't notice this, but it actually turned the dirt underneath into rooted dirt. So I guess we can farm rooted dirt now, nice. But yeah, so the cave generation won't be added in part one, but for the time being, we can actually download a data pack to have the same cave generation that was in the previous snapshots, basically. So let's install that real quick. So the way you create a world with this is just go to the first link in the description, which is always the change log, and go to create a new world and change the data packs here. And then you wanna open your data pack folder and then drag it in, of course. All right, and there we go. I've dragged it in so you can see this here. I'll select that, click done, and then I can create a world. Heapy dragons. Okay, proceed. <laughs> All right, so here we are. Let's go into spectator mode here and let's take a look at the caves. And yep, here are the caves we all know and love. And it does go down to negative 64. First of all, it looks like big lava lakes are a thing. And I mean, there's a few lava lakes in here, but where's what I'm looking for? So apparently aquifers below height zero will sometimes be lava aquifers instead of water ones. So yeah, instead of getting water caves sometimes, we get lava caves below zero. That's kind of cool. Yeah, so over here, like, look at this. This is pretty cool. I swear this was like this in the previous snapshot, but I could be wrong. Not 100% sure. Anyway. All right, so it looks like they've changed the way ore veins generate a little bit. So you'll still see the normal ore veins of, you know, redstone, diamonds, all that kind of stuff. 
but you can have iron ore veins and copper ore veins, which are, and I quote, large, rare, snake-like underground formations. Now, I don't think these are very rare because here's one iron ore vein here. Here's another iron ore vein going through there. And I think I saw one over here as well. Maybe they're just iron, like regular veins. I don't know. Yeah, they don't see the rarest thing in the world, but it's pretty cool, honestly. And I guess it's Mojang's uh, solution to not being able to find iron because that was a pretty big issue for quite a while. I remember really struggling to find iron for some reason. I don't know why I couldn't find any. I just could not find iron for the life of me. That's interesting. <laughs> so anyway, how do these ore veins work? Well, copper veins from above height zero are mixed with granite. So if we come up to like these caves up here maybe we'll see one that's a water cave so some granite veins might have copper mixed in with it i think and it doesn't only generate in granite by the way it also generates in normal stone so this is just like an extra thing to i guess give you a bonus of ores then yeah oh here's one okay yeah <laughs> you can see here's a vein it kind of snakes around like this snakes around snakes around so you get tons of tons and tons of uh, blocks per vein, which is really, really cool. It would be nice if it had a different texture though, the ore. I mean, now that we have the rawors, like it doesn't matter how many different textures we do, but having, you know, a granite, having a granite texture for the copper ore might be nice to help distinguish it maybe. I don't know. Because at the moment it just seems like, you know, more copper mixed in with granite and it doesn't really fit in as much. I don't know. And of course, same for the tough with the iron because iron, iron can generate in veins below zero in blobs of tough. Don't know if I mentioned that already, but yeah, that, that is a thing. But anyway, so this starter pack is available for anyone to use and it's basically continuing on from where the snapshots were before. So if you do want to do a survival in the snapshots and you've already, you know, generated a world with, you've already generated a world with the previous terrain generation, you can just put this starter pack in and continue from there. And if you want to start a new world with the terrain generation, you can put this starter pack in a new world. So really it's not too bad. It's just means you won't get the final caves in the final update you'll just get unfinished caves but i mean let's be honest these are these are unfinished caves and these look pretty cool i could definitely play in these and they're still updating these i mean they've just changed the ore veins so they're still working on these currently it's not like they've given up for the time being nope these are still being worked on so yeah i think that change isn't really as bad then oh an enchanted golden apple look at that all right anyway i think i'm gonna go ahead and end off today's snapshot video here there's a couple things, there's a couple like technical changes, like the statistic for playtime has been renamed to play underscore time. Cool, it uh, doesn't really matter that much. Anyway, that's gonna just about do it for today's snapshot video. I really hope that you enjoyed it and possibly found it useful as well. It's good to be back to normal snapshot videos. I do like doing these. Uh, I was in bed this morning, I was like, oh, is it worth it? Is it worth it? But yeah, it's worth it. I do like doing these, these are fun. Anyway, I really hope that you enjoyed this one and please consider subscribing and liking and stuff. I've forgotten my outro already. <laughs> Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.